Hi, welcome back. This is Adam Rose, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in total knee replacements. So if you've seen some of my other videos, you know, I talked to you about the importance of rehab, that rehab is so important. And I may have mentioned a few different times about the use of a stationary bike. So the people at our local gym, the Shiley Fitness Center, which is actually attached adjacent to our clinic, um, were nice enough to invite me in after hours. There wasn't a lot of other ambient noise. Uh, and I was able to show you these two exercises. So we're talking about doing range of motion exercises on a stationary bike. And again, you can do this on a recumbent bike, which is definitely easier. Um, and I'll explain to you why, as well as a sit-on bike. So if you have either kind of bike in your house, uh, that is something that you can use. Now, it's up to you and your surgeon to determine when they believe it's safest for you to use it. For my patients, if they have a bike at home, I do try to get them on the bike right away. Um, there's really no harm that I found with my patients using that bike right away, but not everybody can use it and get a lot of range of motion until they hit some early goals. And you should be hitting those really within the first couple days. But for some people, if they have difficulty getting on the bike until later, or maybe you don't have access to it, you can start these at two weeks or four weeks. But the earlier I found for my patients that they start these exercises, the better they do with the range of motion. So what I'm going to show you is the um, sit-on recumbent. And the, the beauty of that is you don't have to really get off the seat. You can slide the seat forward, click by click by click. And if you start with the seat all the way back, your knee is not bending as deeply. It's a little bit easier. And then each revolution, you might do, you know, 30 seconds, and then you slide the seat forward a click and then bend it again. It's going to be harder because your knee's bent more. And then you slide the seat forward again a click. If you have a sit on top bike, this makes it a little bit more difficult because you'll see in the video, I just sit on it. And I can kind of stand up and, and jimmy that seat down safely for a patient if they were alone. And you shouldn't really do these alone. I would recommend someone with you the first few times you use it, but you would have to get off the bike drop the seat, get back on, which isn't terribly a nuisance, but it just takes a little bit more time. The other option is if you have a person with you, you might be able to just stand up in the pedals for a second and have them manually adjust the seat by dropping it down a click. So let's get on with those two examples, both the recumbent and the sit on top stationary bike. So the stationary bike is perfect exercise tool to use for your therapy. So you can use a recumbent bike or you can use a sit on top bike. We're gonna start here with the recumbent bike. And the idea is to get the seat back as far as you can comfortably where at the bottom of the pedal stroke, your knee is just slightly bent. If this is the operative knee, it's hard to get a lot of bend in the beginning. So what we're gonna do is just start with a little bit of motion and you can really drive the motion if this leg is weak with your good leg and some people find it's easier to rock it back and forth. And sometimes in the beginning, it might be hard to get all the way around. So this is fine, it's just a bit of a warm up. Once the knee gets warmed up, and I'm not sure why this is, some people find as opposed to pedaling forward, they can drive it backwards with the other leg and use the pedal to their advantage. So this is getting this knee bending, even though we're going backwards. Once the knee is bending, you're loosening it up. And then maybe after you've done five, 10, 20 revolutions, then see if you can get it going forward. This doesn't have to be with any tension. It's just for the motion. Now the beauty of this is once you've done this for a while, 30 seconds or a minute, you're warming the knee up, you're loosening it up. Now we're gonna get more bend or more flexion. So you stop and pause, drive the seat forward a click, and you'll do the same thing again. You may not be able to get all the way around. So go backwards, rock it. Once you've rocked it, you can go backwards driving with your good leg so the operative knee is bending. And then you can pause and you can get going forward again. Now, if you've done this two, three, four times, you may find that you're further up. This is not a great position to exercise for your cardiac aerobic workout but we're working on bending. So you can see with the seat very close to the pedals, we're getting even more bend out of the operative knee. And it's a thing that you can use to judge day by day. If you knew the first day you could only move one click, the third day you could move five clicks, and two weeks in you can move 10 clicks without actually measuring your knee, you can tell that you're getting more bend out of that knee. 
Okay, so if you don't have a recumbent bike, you may have to use a sit-on-top bike, which works just as well. It's just a little bit more difficult to lower the seat. So in this position, just like on the recumbent bike, if this is our operative leg, you're gonna start with the knee straight. The knee should be slightly bent, so you know the seat's at the appropriate height. And just work on rocking it, getting that knee loosened up, especially if it's your first session in the morning. And then once you get comfortable, start working that knee backwards. Drive it with the other leg if you have to help move the pedals. And then once you get the knee moving, then you can stop and move forward again. And this is a good thing to do if you can get it going for at least 30 seconds. You can use the timer on the machine, see where you're at. Once you hit 30 seconds, pause. And this is where you would have to get off the bike. Or if you have somebody spotting you, you can have them help you by dropping that seat just one click. Once it comes down, you start that sequence again. If your knee is down here, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you can get around forwards, great. If not, again, work it backwards. And then pause, work it forwards. Try to get a good 30 seconds in. It loosens the knee up. Once you get your 30 second bend in, pause, get off the bike or have somebody help you and drop that seat down another click. And now you might find maybe the first or second day you're on the bike, now you can't get around and that's okay. This is where you just rock it back and forth and you know that on this day you were able to drop the seat three clicks. Maybe you're a week or two into therapy and now you've started at that high spot, now you've been on the bike for maybe five minutes because every 30 seconds you're able to drop the seat another click and now you're way down here. In this position you can see how much more bent the knee is. So it doesn't matter really what the degrees of the bend are, it just lets you know that the knee is bending more than it was a week ago. And that's really gonna help your physical therapy. Okay, well, there you have it. Two different ways that you can use the stationary bike, either the recumbent or the sit on top bike, that you can use this as a therapy tool to gain more range of motion following your total knee replacement. And again, for some of my patients, even if they're doing well with the range of motion, if they have access to the bike, I'll even have them just get on the bike for two or three minutes before starting their other exercises, just as a way of warming up the knee. It tends to keep it looser throughout the day. But like any of the exercises, always check with your surgeon and your therapist to make sure that doing these exercises is safe for you depending on the surgery, and how far along you've progressed with your range of motion and your other health conditions. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe so you'll get updated of all the future episodes when they become available. And as always, until next time, thank you and stay safe.